Hello, everyone, back again. So we did our housekeeping stuff. Now we are still missing something, right? Which is our storage. We did not, we don't have any storage yet attached to uh, our cluster, right? That's true, yeah. That's the uh, next part we do. Mm -hmm. So in essence, uh, it's only this PowerShell commandlet, but we will talk a little bit more what is happening there. Yeah. So uh, we will look before we do our enable cluster S2D mm -hmm. house status and after the enablement. So let's first So look. it's a before and after show kind exactly. of Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So let's do a get physical disk. Mm -hmm. And here we see our local NVMEs. In the node, I'm on node one. Mm -hmm. You see there are seven devices. Uh, mm -hmm. One is our boot disk, and then we have six additional NVMEs. We talked about that already. Mm -hmm. um, one remark if you would have SSDs and HDDs, so HDDs, mm -hmm. so that are that are usually connected to a SAS controller. We mm -hmm. would now, after we enabled the cluster, we would see also the SSDs and HDDs of the other nodes. Mm -hmm. With NVMEs, it's a bit special, we don't see them. Only mm -hmm. after we enable our cluster S2D, we see all NVMEs and all nodes. And look here, the media type, this is a bit, this is a bit um, confusing. Confusing, yeah. It's SSD. So the media type for NVMEs and for SSDs is SSD. The difference is in the bus type. Yeah. So if we would show the bus type, it's uh, NVME and ZAS, uh, mm -hmm. but the media type is the same. Okay. Okay. Let's Good. look at something that's called a storage subsystem because storage bases can be done on a single node. Mm -hmm. It would be the first storage subsystem of this node, Windows storage on the node. So we could use these six NVMEs and create a local storage space. Yeah, but yeah. we don't want that. We want a cluster-wide storage right. space. Mm -hmm. And that's the second one, the cluster Windows uh, storage on cluster name. And I assume you see the second option only because we already created the cluster, right? So Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So, and let's, no, that's wrong. Let's copy this one and let's do that. So we look mm -hmm. at the pools, mm -hmm. the storage pools, and uh, we have two here. Mm -hmm. um, one is for the local host and one is mm -hmm. for the, uh, for the cluster wide, but these are oh. primordial pools. Yeah? Okay. Then it was so prim are primordial prim pools. Well, yeah, they they are there. I would say they're right? just there. Um, they're just there, and uh, every every disk that's you know not in some other pool, it's in the primordial pool, right? So yeah. it's the one to take uh, to take the disks from, right? Yeah, and then I have two more things here mm -hmm. where we hopefully don't have anything, so we don't have any storage tiers. Mm -hmm. But after our enable cluster S two D, we will have okay. them, and we look at the virtual disks. We also don't have virtual disks. Okay. So okay. Now is Good. the time to enable our cluster S2D. Mm -hmm. And I use the verbose option so that we get a little bit more of output. And you see mm -hmm. here, uh, it, it does some pre-checks. It ensures that all nodes support S2D. Okay. It looks at uh, which disk types we have. Have we different disk types, multiple? Then we will create mm. some devices will be caching devices, some devices mm. will be capacity devices. In our case, we have only one disk type, all NVMe. So all of the NVMe's will be capacity devices. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of options for enable cluster S2D. Right. Normally you don't have to use them uh, and don't use them, except you have some special scenario. For example, you would have very fast NVMEs and capacity NVMEs, and you want some caching mm. NVMEs in front of it, that would be a mm. scenario where you, uh, you would use some options. So let's- So uh, usually that's also, I mean, caching has some requirements on how many writes you can do on that device, yeah. right? Because they are used differently sort of, um, mm -hmm. and your disk needs to survive these lots of writes, right? I exactly. Mean, Okay. So I, yeah. I have another scenario. It's uh, it's in uh, Windows Server 2022 20, uh, storage based uh -huh. direct cluster. There I have 
for obtain NVMEs and for Kingston NVMEs, the obtains mm. are much, much, much better. Mm -hmm. So I use them as caching devices in front of the mm -hmm. uh, Kingston NVMEs. So here you see okay. he's doing a mm. lot. He's uh, yep. reaching out to every node. Mm. Uh, he sees six devices in every node. He checks if every node can reach every device, so 24. Mm -hmm. From each mm -hmm. node, that's okay. And now he's starting the health provider that takes a bit, and then we can check what he has, so, what he has done. Yeah. yeah, maybe summarize for the people that are new to Storage Spaces Direct. Um, we do support HDDs, um, SSDs, NVMEs, and persistent memory, I, I think, right? Uh, storage a, class memory is the name, right? yeah. Um, the later is not so important in the moment. Uh, right. Usually we have NVMEs, SSDs, and HDDs, and the HDDs are also fading away, I would say. Yeah. yeah. And from a pricing perspective, I think you know it depends on what workload you are doing on this, right? So this is the a lot of discussions will go in, you know, which type of hardware to choose yeah. in order for your workload. Um, but I I get the point. You know, the system checks what it's what is there and trying to do the best configuration out of it. Mm -hmm. So, and we can do a mixture, right? So you have NVMEs only, that means um, they will be used sort of as a flat storage, right? No caching in between. I mean, mm -hmm. the thing goes all in. All capacity, yeah. All capacity. But what would happen if we would have the, the most difficult one, I would say like NVMEs plus SSDs plus HDDs, what would then happen? I mean, yeah, I had uh, one of those systems until mm -hmm. recently. Um, I had two NVMEs in there, uh, four right. SSDs and eight HDDs. So mm -hmm. it's uh, uh, the system would uh, would recognize three different uh, storage types, NVME, mm -hmm. SSD, HDD. It would it would uh, um, promote the fastest devices, the NVMEs as caching devices, and the SSDs mm -hmm. and the HDDs would be capacity devices. Okay. And that would reflect in the storage tiers that uh, the system automatically creates. So we would have a, a storage tier, let's say, for example, a mirror and on SSD and mirror on HDD, and we could mm -hmm. create volumes of that. So, mm -hmm. but now we are, it's okay. done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have again an, an HTML output. Uh, we will not look into that now. Everything is fine there. We, but we will look at the uh, disks and okay. storage pool tiers and so on. So let's mm -hmm. get. So that's the after show part, right? Before that's now we the did, after that's show a, part. Oh, okay. Yeah, we have now our yeah. storage spaces direct enabled. Mm -hmm. And you okay. see here. Okay. We have 25 entries, mm -hmm. 24 here, um, and one boot device. Yeah, so okay. he also shows the boot device, the local one, and then the six local uh, NVMEs and the three times six NVMEs that are in remote systems. And from the numbering able... on, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. go on. Well, the from, numbering from is the, important. From... You're right. The numbering from the numbering, I would say, you know, they, they it starts with a thousand, right, and puts the Thousand first is maybe exactly. the first node, and then going through thousand and six is yeah. until the sixth um, uh, NVMe on that node, and then next node would be two thousand, right? And um, starting from there, I, I assume. It's not sorting by number, unfortunately. It seems to be a string or so. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, yeah, the you are right. All with the three in front are in the same system, and the four and the one and so on. Yeah. Let's look at the storage pool. I did the sort wrong, of course. So if we look at the storage pool, we have one additional pool, and that's called S2D on cluster name. So that's the usual name for the cluster-wide storage pool. Um, and to be clear, you only are allowed to have one pool in your system, uh, with one exception, that is when you have a stretched Azure Stack HCI cluster, then you have two pools. Yeah? So this is uh, not primordial. Um, and we see here it has 34.91 terabyte in capacity, so devices in there. And there are some is already uh, taken, so 80 gigabytes are taken. We will see what that is later. So let's look at the tiers. It 
will create tears. You don't have to use them, but you can. And you see here we have two old tiers. Their names are always performance and capacity. I think this is because of the compatibility compatibility with uh, um, with a server 2016 storage space. Yeah, um, there were performance and capacity tier, and with 2019 and above, and also Azure Stack HCI, we have a little bit more. The tier names are a little bit more informative. So this tier is a mirror on SSD. Yeah or a parity on SSD. So if you if we would use those tiers to create our volumes, uh, it would be in this one, it would be a three-way mirror. So it's a mirror with two additional copies. So one copy plus two, three-way, three mirror, or three copies. And the parity would be a dual parity. Yeah? We don't have to use them, but if we, if we would work with PowerShell and if we want to do something like a mirror accelerated parity volume, and we will talk uh, uh, talk about that a little bit later when we create volumes, we, we could use two tiers to create a volume. That's very special and I like that a lot. So let's look for the virtual disk and there will be also one already. And it's not two, copy. And we have one virtual disk it's called cluster performance history um, it's a three-way mirror and it's a small one it has only 24 gigabytes usable and you see here the footprint on the pool is 73.5 so uh, three times 24 plus a little bit of metadata and this uh, volume or this virtual disk is used by the cluster to store performance data. Yeah, uh, every 10 seconds, it stores information about the disks, the volumes, the VMs, the network. So very, very um, much information. And these on information are condensed um, after an hour. Um, so we get a lot of information in this 24 gigabyte volume. It's small. But we will see it in the Windows Admin Center. All the information that Windows Admin Center shows uh, will come out of, out of this virtual disk. OK, I think uh, that's our um, storage enablement. Um, Bernard, and uh, you were gone. <laughs> yes, my camera. I, I didn't see it. So I, we are done with our storage enablement, and we see us in the next video, right?